There are so many different museums in the Tokyo area like Team Lab, Mori Art Museum, and the Ghibli Museum. If you've been to these museums or if you're looking for other interesting and unique museums, here are some underrated museums that I love and would highly recommend you to check out. Some are about nature, some are about art, some are about history. Most of these museums are inside Tokyo and some are located outside the city. If you have a day to spare or a weekend to get away, hit up one or more of these places. Let's dive in and talk about the first museum on this list, Small Worlds. This is probably my favorite museum on this list. Small Worlds is the world's largest indoor miniature theme park. There are 8,000 square meters of miniature dioramas and small-scale exhibitions here. There are six different areas to view here and each area brings a different kind of atmosphere. You can visit different replicas of real-life locations or explore a fictional spot. At different locations and time of the day, the small world changes as well. In the small world, day alternates with night every 15 minutes, so there's always something new to keep your eye out for. Even though this museum is not massive, I ended up spending four hours here. My personal favorite was the Kansai International National Airport area where you can see the miniature planes take off and the passengers hang out in the terminals. The attention to detail here is so incredible and I'm sure you have so much fun admiring all the beautiful figurines. Next up, we've got Edo Tokyo Museum. If you want to discover more about Tokyo and its history, then the Edo Tokyo Museum is a great place for you. Edo Tokyo Museum is in Yoboku and it opened in 1993. The purpose of this museum is to preserve and pass down the history and the culture of Edo and Tokyo which have been disappearing over time. The permanent exhibition room of the Edo Tokyo Museum has a huge exhibition area of 9,000 square meters and it's divided into two areas, the Edo Zone and the Tokyo Zone. The exhibitions here relate to lives, culture, and history of people that lived in Edo and Tokyo eras. On top of the about 2,000 historical materials, there are also dioramas and full-scale restored models here. There are different experiences for you to enjoy here and take part in, so when you come here, make sure to take your photos. Okay, the third place for you is Japan Olympic Museum. Tokyo has hosted two Olympics, one in 1964 and one recently in 2021. If you weren't able to experience the Olympics for yourself but interested in learning about the games, you might want to come and check out the Japan Olympic Museum. The Japan Olympic Museum is located opposite the new Olympic Arena in the Shinjuku area. The Japan Olympic Museum showcases the Olympic Games in the form of art. Artworks created by artists, children, as well as athletes are displayed here after the games. There are exhibitions about how the Olympic Games are related to the world and you can get a clearer picture of the history of the Olympic Games as well as Japan's influence on the Olympic Games. On top of all of this, there's also the Olympic Games section where you can challenge your own physical abilities and measure your physical movement in relation to the Olympic athletes. Okay, now on to the next place, the Railway Museum. If you like trains or even slightly interested, you should check out the Railway Museum. This museum is in Saitama and it was built and operated by the East Japan Railway Kocha Foundation. This museum tells tells the history of the industry centering on the actual exhibition of vehicles and railway technology relating to railways in Japan and around the world. Here you can find 30 railway cars, train simulators, railway model dioramas, mini trains and a lot more. There are many genuine full-scale large train cars and engines on display here from different areas of Japan. You can even climb aboard some of the trains. There are also a few fun interactive exhibitions here, so they're good for children and adults. Okay, then we've got National Museum of Nature and Science. The National Museum of Nature and Science is located in Ueno Park and it's a museum with a long history. The museum was founded in the 10th year of the Meiji era. This museum is located next to the National Museum of Western Art. Outside the museum, you can spot the iconic huge whale statue. You can easily spot the statue from afar. The exhibitions at the National Museum of Nature and Science are divided into permanent exhibitions and special exhibitions. The exhibition Japanese and Nature here shows the changes in the Japanese population. Here, you can find the transformation of Japanese people from their lifestyle, clothes, and height changing with the times. You can see all the transitions at a glance. The Earth History Navigator Room gives you a great overview of the history History of Japan. It's surrounded by three huge screens. Each screen shows the transition of space history, life history, and human history. A special exhibition that I love here is the dinosaur section. There are all kinds of dinosaur displays, dinosaur fossils, and dinosaur knowledge for you to discover here. If you're a dinosaur fan like me, you'll be amazed by this exhibition. Another underrated museum is Meguro Parasitological Museum. Parasites might sound disgusting. You might be thinking, why would you visit a place like this? But 
trust me, it is not that gross and you might find a lot of these exhibitions interesting. Like the name suggests, Meguro Parasitological Museum is a museum in Meguro. It's the only museum that specializes in parasites in the whole entire world and a lot of visitors come to visit here. Oh, and this museum is completely free to enter. The exhibition room on the first floor is a space that explains the concept of parasites. A number of different parasites preserved in containers around the world are on display here. You can take a close look at these parasites and some might even amaze you. There are different explanations displayed here for you to find out what they're all about. The theme of the second floor is parasites related to the human body. This area shows you a lot of shocking cases explaining the life cycle of parasites, the symptom of infecting humans, and the history of the research here. Some of the cases shown here will blow your mind and might even make your skin crawl. Just keep in mind that this museum is not very big so you probably won't spend a lot of time here. But don't worry, since it's located in Meguro, I'm sure you'll find other things that you can do in the area. Next up, we've got Hakone Open Air Museum. The Hakone Open Air Museum is one of my favorite museums I've ever been to. Not only are there many gorgeous exhibitions here, the outdoor area here is absolutely stunning and you can spend hours and hours relaxing here while taking in the beautiful scenery. Hakone Open Air Museum is the first outdoor technology museum in Japan. There are a lot of outdoor exhibitions here. One popular spot in this museum is the 18 meters high symphony sculpture. The stained glass and spiral staircase in the center makes up the building. The stained glass that surrounds the stairs with the natural light shining through is a masterpiece. You can also go up the stairs where you can find an observatory overlooking the area. You can also find the Picasso Exhibition Hall, a permanent exhibition installed in this museum. It's a huge facility that has one of the world's largest collections. After a long day of walking around, you can also visit the hot spring foot bath here and rest up. Another underrated museum you should visit is Kawaguchiko Music Forest. This is a museum that shines a spotlight on music boxes, not just the bedside music boxes that you might be used to, but huge mechanical organs and other automatic musical instruments. Kawaguchiko Music Forest is honestly one of a kind musical theme park located in Kawaguchiko. You can even see Mount Fuji from here on a clear day. It holds a world-class collection of automatic musical instruments. You can find the world's largest dance organ here and the Philharmonic performance orchestra that was actually designed for the Titanic. For the price of the admission, you can watch the instruments come to life through all kinds of musical experiences throughout the day, including one-of-a-kind live performances by talented musicians and opera singers. There's also a really cool sad art performance performed by artists and backed by live musicians. The Rose Garden is another must-see spot here. 720 varieties of beautiful flowers color the garden throughout the season. If you have time, I would recommend you relax in this gorgeous garden and possibly dine in the restaurant. The restaurant has a terrace and it offers a unique view of Mount Fuji and you can enjoy all kinds of international food as well as local specialties while enjoying music concerts. Even if you've heard of or been to some of these museums, a lot of these places offer seasonal events or special exhibitions. Check out the official websites of these museums to find out what they have going on. Which of these museums would you be interested in checking out? Let us know in the comment section. If you know any other underrated museums around Japan, definitely let us know as well. We've got more videos about living in Japan, traveling in Japan, Japanese culture, and a lot more, so make sure to subscribe and press the bell notification. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.